Very good. And you being in public relations, uh, do you visit a lot of different places and tell them about the facilities? How does that work? Yes, I do. Um, I travel all over and I talk about our facilities. Um, I get to meet a lot of wonderful people and um, get our voice out there that there is help and there is hope. So great. So you would go to uh, businesses and schools and just different areas and talk to people? Yes. What about, um, what about if somebody's so desperate that they've been in the hospital, you know, that it, the drugs and the alcohol has really made them sick? How do you deal with that? Mm -hmm. Then they would have to go through, you know, the detox process. They would have to be in the hospital until they're able and stable enough to come to our facilities. Right. And then once they're stable, they can come and then get the help that they need. What's the ages of the people there? What's the age limits, uh, like from 18 to whatever? Or All just the way up, 18 to, to whatever age. We've had um, ladies, um, I know, in their 60s before. So. What about... Uh, Teenagers, do you deal any with teenagers? No, we don't. 18. Okay, 18 and up. So these girls and guys has got some real problems, but you've got some real solutions and real answers. That's right. And let's talk about that for a minute here. You know, I know it's a process, and every day they get stronger and stronger, but what are some of the things that you all instruct to them and tell them? Um, some of the things that we would talk about is the knowledge of addiction. We want them to get the knowledge of how addiction works. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what is it that uh, addiction, how does addiction thrive? Um, we, with the women a lot too, we also talk about codependency in their relationships mm -hmm. because it is very clear that their relationships are a huge component in their addictions. And it is the piece that will determine a lot of times if they go back into that same situation. Right. So we talk about all of that. Tell me in the viewing audience, you know, we don't realize how bad that people have really got it. You know, when they're on these drugs or dependence or alcohol, they've got it real bad. Explain to us uh, some of the things that you've seen and, and, you know, just educate us a little bit. Um, I can give you um, a little bit of a background on one um, in particular girl that I know very well who is now an employee of ours. Um, you know, she had become a needle user. She was an IV user. Mm. She had lost everything. Um, she had come to the place where she would steal or do whatever she had to do to get the drugs because that's what happens. Mm. When you get to a certain point, the addiction takes over. Mm. You know, there's no, um, I think I might get high. It's you have to get high. Mm. You have to just to feel normal. So she came to this point, and then she went through Karen's place. She was our very first student. And um, at the end of her stay, of course, during Karen's place, she found God. And she found that, that, that need that she, you know, was really looking for the whole time, that emptiness. You know, it, it's a legitimate hunger that we're feeling, mm -hmm. but we're feeling with garbage oh. rather than with the, the Spirit of God. So, you know, then now she works for us, and she is doing amazing. That is so powerful. What a powerful story. And, you know, you might be dealing with substance abuse, some of your children, some of your family. There is hope. There is help. These three different facilities. Um, could you give us like a physical address of different these different facilities? I can't give you a physical address um, for the safety of our women and oh, men, okay. but I can tell you the area that they're in. Yeah, the area. Um, we have Beth's Blessing, which is located in Anvil, Kentucky. Anvil. Mm -hmm. And then we have Karen's Place, which is located in Louisa, Kentucky, real mm -hmm. close to Yatesville Lake. So they have that real close. They can do um, walks and different things. Okay. And then Bell Grove Springs is in Fleming County, Kentucky, real close to Moorhead. Okay. And we have a 22-acre lake there on the property where the men get to fish and, and do nature hikes and that sort of thing. Wonderful. So you've got activities for these uh, stay-ins as well. Yes. So they're not just shut up in a room just sitting there looking at the wall. No. You guys are really reaching out to them. Yes. We feel that it's the most beneficial, you know, for them to have activities, to get outside, to breathe the air, you know, to, to exercise. Right. Right. What about people that endangers their children? You know, we yes. need educated on this. You know, you're not just affecting your life. You're affecting your children and people around you. People says, well, I ain't got no problem, but they're on drugs, they're on alcohol, and they get behind the wheel of that car yes. or with their children. They're affecting everyone around them. Mm -hmm. There's something that we, <laughs> uh, you know, everyone has to realize 
every action they take, someone else is going to pay the consequence, whether good or bad. You right. know, the consequences of our action, and especially our children, will, will be the ones who pay for that. Um, and we have a lot of mothers that come to our facilities, and we do see it as a generational. Uh, we see that we're not only helping this generation, right. but the generations that follow. We're hoping to break that, that stronghold. You know, this is so powerful, and I'm sure you would agree with me. It's like an epidemic. You see drug use in our communities. Every day you hear about another drug bust or somebody else going to jail over drugs, prescription medicine, um, needles, mm -hmm. alcohol, drunken and drive, drinking and driving. It's an epidemic. Yes. And we as the public, we need to get involved with these facilities. What can we do? as the public to support these facilities? Um, there's a few things you can do, but the one that I think is the most effective is for any um, donations that would help to, for, to uh, support an indigent bed. You know, a lot of times there are people that come in that um, can't get help because they don't have the fees. Right. Um, we take private pay, we take um, private insurance, and we take Unite vouchers. But if they can't get any of those, you know, three, if they have no money, then we do, uh, we have indigent beds. But, you know, one way a lot of churches will support and sponsor a, a bed. Right. So that's, that's one of the best ways I think that you could help.